there is a I, massive I, market distortion. There are more than 500 electric vehicle models that are slated to be on the road by the end of 2025. Um, you know, Tesla right now is, is having its heyday. It's executing impeccably. Um, but the competition's real and it's coming and it's got, you know, incredibly good financing. It's hard, it's hard for me to be bullish on Tesla here. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm reacting to one of Tesla's biggest bulls. I mean bears. I mean, I'm not really sure what he is, but he does have a $250 price target on Tesla stock, recently increased by a whopping 66% up from $150 per share, if you can believe that. And no, it's not Gordon the Class Clown Johnson. It's Craig Erwinkle. Er, I forget what his last name is. Anyway, let's get into the video. If you love crypto, stocks, and free stuff, or just want to help out the channel, check out these great offers. BlockFi are launching the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card. People in the US can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase with no annual fee using the BlockFi Bitcoin rewards credit card. Check out the link in the description. And for a limited time, you can get up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the the link in the description and if you'd like up to two free stocks check out the link in the description to Weeble. if you open a new account you'll get one free stock valued up to three hundred dollars just for opening an account and if you make an initial deposit of five dollars or more you'll get a second free stock valued up to two thousand dollars seriously Free stocks? Yes, please. And finally, if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for your support, guys. Let's get back to it. Um, so when do you think the market starts to come around to that point of view, if it does? So it will happen over the next few years. Tesla's executing impeccably, but the market valuation is a distortion. They're gonna produce less than a million vehicles this year. Um, and they're valued at more than the rest of the industry. Um, the industry is going to produce more than 75. So does Tesla deserve a 75x premium uh, to the rest of the industry? My answer is categorically no. Now, I don't want to rain on your parade here, Mr. Irwin, but one, there is no rest of the industry. The companies that you're referring to don't produce the same thing that Tesla produces. Tesla produces electric vehicles, computers on wheels. The legacy automotive industry produces dinosaurs, aka internal combustion engine vehicles, which are going extinct. It's completely meaningless to compare Tesla, who produce completely different technology, it might look similar on the outside, but it's completely different under the, literally under the hood, with companies that are producing products with century old technology that are literally going extinct. You take a look at what happened yesterday, they had a fantastic contract, 100,000 100, cars from a, a major rental company. That's a big deal, right? $4.2 billion contract but it added $114 billion to, to the market cap. You know, if uh, Ford or General Motors announces something similar, and they both do a lot of business with the rental houses uh, globally, you know, is that gonna have a similar impact on their market cap, you know? <laughs> so a little bit of context would be useful here. For one, Hertz purchased literally 100,000 Teslas, Model 3s, locked in at $42,000 a piece, $4.2 billion. Tesla did not give them a discount. I mean, this is unimaginable. Imagine being Hertz and going, hey, Tesla, can we have literally 100,000 vehicles? What's your best price? And Tesla goes, the same price as everyone else is paying. Get wrecked, bro. And then Hertz just bends over and takes it. That's how good of a deal this is for Hertz. They were willing to purchase these at market price. As I discussed in yesterday's video, this is a huge vote of confidence. There's a million reasons this is extremely bullish for Tesla and I understand why the stock reacted that way. Even though at the micro level, it wasn't reacting to the order. Tesla's already supply constrained. It's not really gonna affect the bottom line. But the contrast here, if a company like Ford or GM, who would need to be down on their knees offering to do anything to Hertz to get this deal across the line, if a company like Ford or General Motors sold 100,000 vehicles to Hertz, Hertz would be buying them at a massive discount. The difference here is Tesla doesn't need to provide a discount even though this is a gigantic order because Tesla can't produce enough vehicles to meet the existing demand. Take it or leave it. And the vote of confidence from Hertz, the fact that they bought these at market price 100,000 just shows what a compelling vehicle the Model 3 is. So Craig's point that a deal like this with a General Motors or a Ford wouldn't affect their stock price nearly as much is completely irrelevant. It's nonsensical. It's not a vote of confidence for the future of EVs. 
It's not evidence that they have unlimited demand. It doesn't show that it's the most compelling financial decision for a vehicle hire business to choose. Of course, it wouldn't affect their stock like that. Their market cap smaller than that one that we saw yesterday. There is a massive market distortion. I guess my question would be, if that's all true, and I see your point about fleets, um, why didn't Hertz announce a deal with, uh, with GM or Ford for the models that are still to come? Yeah, no, so those models still need to prove themselves. They still need to get out there and actually uh, take the market share that we expect them to take from Tesla over the next several years. Now, I'm not really sure how to respond to this comment from Craig. Let's be honest here. No one is taking any market share from Tesla. Now, it is true. There will be EVs that are sold by companies other than Tesla in the future, and these numbers will increase over time, even if these vehicles are nothing more than polished turds in comparison. But they're not going to be taking market share away from Tesla because the entire EV market itself is growing. There are more than 500 electric vehicle models that are slated to be on the road by the end of 2025. Ooh, wow, 500. And how many of those vehicles are going to be better value than a Tesla? Anyone? Let me know in the comments below. Anyone? Anyone at all? Take a guess. I'm just kidding. I already know the answer. Zero. The competition is coming prematurely all over itself. Nobody wants that. So what else have you got for us, Craig? Um, you know, Tesla right now is, is having its heyday. It's executing impeccably, um, but the competition's real and it's coming and it's got, you know, incredibly good financing. Wait, what? Incredibly well financed? Oh, okay. Yep. Here's the logical argument from Craig. If you have money, then you can catch up to Tesla. Totally makes sense. That's why companies that had tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of cash have already done that and put Tesla out of business. Shout out to Apple. So it's hard, it's hard for me to be bullish on Tesla here. I love what they've done. They're pioneering EVs, um, you know, and EVs are, are really fantastic vehicles. I think everybody should test drive an EV before they buy a vehicle um, because probability is good that they'll, they'll take an EV seriously. Um, yeah. But valuation is too much for me. FYI, not too much for me. Still buying Tesla stock with every spare cent. Um, and I, I get it, but you know, it's funny. I can remember having conversations about Amazon 20 plus years ago, Craig, uh, where people say, oh, well, the market cap is bigger than the entire book business or sale of books. I mean, people just didn't have the imagination necessary to realize perhaps what Amazon's real ambitions were. This is a very reasonable point. By the way, special shout out to Mark Toilet Boy Spiegel, who very publicly declared back in 2015 that it was finally time to short Amazon stock. How'd that work out, Mark? And I don't bring this point up specifically to roast Mark Spiegel. After all, based on his investment track record, he appears to be a self-roasting entity. I bring it up just to point out the fact that some people, even 10, 15, 20 plus years into a generational growth company story, there can still be people out there who claim that it's overvalued and or the valuation makes no sense. Shout out to Craig Irwin. And I wonder with, with Tesla, you know, what about autonomous and what that will mean and roaming taxi fleets? Uh, what about solar? What about things we haven't even thought about that clearly others perhaps believe uh, Musk will be able to deliver? So if you, if you really want to daydream, there's, there's a list of things you can daydream. Yes, autonomous, um, full self-driving vehicles. You know, the, the, if you want to daydream about $100,000 a vehicle in, in software revenue, go for it, right? That's, that's, that, I think that's kind of out, out of the, the bounds of, of what's rational for me. Um, you know, I know Elon talks to his friends, or at least here he talks to his friends in private about taking on the railroads with autonomous trucking, right? You know, there's... Uh, Electric flight is actually taking off these days for short haul electric flight. You know, be my guest, right? I, I'm not a Luddite. I love the progress of technology. I just think it's a little aggressive to assume that Tesla's going to leave everything um, and that the competition is not going to impact everything from um, sales velocity to pricing um, because, you know, it's a great brand. The company's done a fantastic job to date and others will also do a good job. So I just want to pick apart the uh, so-called reasoning here from Craig Irwin. The idea that Tesla has done a good job and others will also do a good job, well, in theory, if you give them enough time, but see, here's the thing. If you claim that Tesla has done a good job today, the standard, the quality, the value, etc., of their products today, and others will eventually be able to do the same thing, you also have to account for the fact that Tesla is moving faster than anyone else, 
Their technology is improving faster than anyone else. Their costs are declining faster than anyone else. They're growing faster than anyone else. Therefore, economies of scale are applying more to their business than anyone else. See, the thing is, Tesla has an unassailable lead. Maybe in 2025 or 2026, you'll be able to buy a vehicle from one of Tesla's competitors that offers about the same amount of value for the price as Tesla's vehicles today. But what do you think Tesla's gonna be offering in 2025? Craig Irwin seems unwilling or unable to acknowledge the fact that Tesla's lead is unassailable. They have the best technology, the best manufacturing techniques, the best price performance, and that lead is accelerating. No one is catching up to them. Sure, EVs from other companies will get better over time, but so will Tesla's at an even faster rate. This is a flywheel. There's no catching up to Tesla. And that's, you know, that's really my contention here. That's why I think people are better off in small cap, you know, and there's people out there that believe that you're better off playing one of the more traditional OEMs for their future success in this in this industry. Right. I won't bore you with the shade that's coming in over Twitter. I'm sure you've heard it before, uh, but we I love checking in with you, Craig. Appreciate it very much. Craig Irwin, of Thank off. you. I feel bad for Craig Irwin. He's a closet Tesla bull. He just can't get to grips with Tesla's valuation. It's just like the Amazon tale. It's just like the people who don't understand growth companies. These video clips are not going to age well. In fact, if you guys recall, Craig Irwin has been discussing Tesla now for, what, eight years publicly, at least? And as the company has grown, he's continued to remain bullish on their execution, their products, their technology, their brand, etc. But he just hasn't been able to digest the fact that this is disruptive, transformative technology company with huge potential in the future. They deserve to be valued at a massive premium because they're doing things and will do things that no other company ever has or will do. Tesla truly is a generational company executing far better than any other company today. I can't wait to see what Craig Irwin is saying about Tesla at 2 trillion, 5 trillion, 10 trillion plus dollars. Hopefully he's still around in the stock analysis game at that point in time. It shouldn't be too long. In fact, let me know in the comments below. Do you think at some point in the future, Craig Irwin is finally going to fully come around, fully come out of the closet, embrace Tesla's valuation and actually start recommending investors buy the stock? Let me know in the comments below. What year do you think Craig Irwin will wake up? Or alternatively, at what market cap for Tesla do you think he'll finally wake up and see the light? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card, where you can earn 1.5% Bitcoin back on every purchase. There's a link in the description. You can also earn up to $250 in crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, also linked below. And finally, don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake, also linked in the description. These great offers also help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again